What's up Ozones, welcome to the Ozone and welcome to another FNAF news video. Now today we have some more uh, graphic novel news. I did a video on Saturday I believe uh, where I covered some of the new kind of news about the uh, about the FNAF graphic novels, the Fazbear Frights graphic novels to be specific. We went through the fact that there were two previews. There was a preview of Into the Pit and there was a preview of To Be Beautiful. Just a page and it was very pixelated and low definition, but they looked really cool and I really loved the colour popping on Into the Pit and, you know, the, the tint on To Be Beautiful, which made the story kind of feel, hmm, like mysterious, I guess, and kind of sickly. Funnily enough, uh, the artist for To Be Beautiful, Anthony Morris, actually commented on that video saying that he didn't know that the books or the pages had been leaked yet. And I just found that really funny. Thank you for commenting. But I'm here today because we actually have more previews and this time it's not for the first book, but for the second volume of the Fazbear Frights graphic novel collection. So we're going to go through that today and if you enjoy this video then make sure you give it a big fat like and you subscribe of course because it really helps out my channel a lot and whenever FNAF news comes out I'll be making videos on it so just subscribe to keep you posted, yourself posted, eh. Okay so before we actually get into the previews I do have something to mention and this is something that we talked about last time which is the fact that in the first volume of the graphic novel and the second volume of the graphic novels we had out of stock. We had out of stock in both of the graphic novels that have been announced so far and I was very confused about that because why would you do one story twice, you know? It was clearly a mistake and I've got confirmation of that right now. It was a mistake. Out of stock is in the first book which is why the cover of the first book is of course the plush trap chaser. But in the second book, we don't have out of stock anymore. We have Fetch. That's right, Fetch is getting its very own graphic novel version. And I'm really excited about that. Obviously, we're missing out Count the Ways, we're missing out Lonely Freddy, and I think I understand why now. I think it's because they're kind of boring stories in a way. Not too much really goes on in Lonely Freddy. Uh, but in Count the Ways especially, most of it, like literally half the story takes place in Fre uh, in Funtime Freddy's, you know, stomach cubicle thing. And so like, it's it would be very difficult to kind of make that all into art and make it interesting, uh, make sure that you don't fall asleep while reading it. So I think that's why those were scrapped. I think it's kind of because they were kind of boring stories. I imagine they're going to skip stories like I mean, maybe they'll do The Breaking Wheel, but I imagine they'll skip stories like The Breaking Wheel, In the Flesh, uh, Pizza Kit, uh, things like that. Sojo's Lucky Day, maybe. I don't know. I feel like they could do it well. They just have to make sure it's kind of like on the line of gory, you know? They can't make it too gory, obviously, otherwise they can't publish the books. Uh, but I don't want them to be like children's storybooks. So I, I think... I think they can do it well as long as they kind of, they have a good idea set in mind and they're doing the right stories. And I think at the moment they've picked out some good ones to do. Obviously we have been announced two graphic novels and we have covered three of the Fazbear Frights books. I believe this to be sort of an indication. I think there's going to be about seven or eight graphic novels, Fazbear Fright graphic novels. I could be completely wrong about that. They could only have like five. Uh, they could even have maybe four, but they'd be missing out a lot of the stories. So I'm, I'm wondering which stories they're gonna do from later on. Comment down below which stories you'd like them to, you'd like to see in the graphic novels. Anyway, let's get straight into these previews. Let's begin with Fetch because this is the first story that will be covered in the second volume of the graphic novels. And I love this preview. I love this preview so much. Why do I love it? because of the colours. The colours are beautiful. They could have made it completely boring. They could have made it, you know, like browns and greys and really dull colours, but they have made it exciting. They have made the colours pop. And I hope that like, basically the whole story is like this, where it's kind of like colour bursts everywhere. Um, because it's really nice to see that. And it's really nice for my eyes. 
Uh, it's really easy to understand the story. This is the part where obviously um, Greg is getting annoyed at Fetch and he's beating him up. Um, speaking of which, I do need to finish my Fetch audiobook. <laughs> I will do that soon, I'm sorry. It's This is a really good depiction of it, I think. Um, a lot of people, are, actually I'll get into this in a minute, but a lot of people have been saying that the artwork isn't very good, but I'm completely fine with it. I think that the colours mainly is like what makes me love this so much. Uh, it's really simple art, but I actually think that's good. I think it's nice and stylized. Uh, and again, we'll talk about that in a second, but I really like this. It is very comic booky. It's exactly what I wanted, really. Obviously, not too much words. Um, and, you know, it it's depicted well. I, I You can tell what's going on. Um, Greg is clearly angry. He goes, oh. and then, you know, clank. Wham wham crash stuff like that. It's it's pretty cool. I don't really know what else to say It's just I love this preview I think it's really good and I'm hoping that the whole story kind of holds up like this So the second story in the second volume of the graphic novels is room for one more and this one looks okay <laughs> um, People have had problems with this one, so I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to like like go in because my picture is small but we have to strap you in is what Ballora says this is the part where obviously the, the nightmare with the dentist uh, near the end of the story um, the doctor doesn't like what is what is I actually cannot see what it says I am so sorry but I cannot see what it says <laughs> I'm not gonna read it obviously we will read it ourselves um, we will read it ourselves uh, in a read through. Um, I, I will be covering these books on the channel. Um, but yeah, this looks okay. I actually, I think it looks good. Um, Ballora, Ballora's design is like perfect for me. Stanley's design, I actually didn't picture Stanley like this. I don't know why, but I didn't think Stanley looked like this at all. I feel like, I think they are going pretty accurate though. I think Greg was pretty accurate, although it did look like a grown-up Gregory from Security Breach. I don't know if that's a coincidence, but um, there you go. And then of course we have the opening of the mouth and then the reveal that the Doctor is a mini Reno or whatever, uh, which is creepy, kind of creepy. I hope that they um, go further with that, with the creep factor. But what I will say is it's really difficult to kind of portray creepiness and fear and provoke fear through art. Um, I think it's, 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 <laughs> when it's effective, it's really effective. Like you can, you really get the chills from like some images, but I don't think it's gonna be like that in comic form. And I think this is a problem that a lot of people have with this kind of style of graphic novel. Sure, it's all comic book style and it's really, it's a lot of fun. But when it comes to like the creepy stories, I don't think it's gonna work very well because there's not a lot of action and really you kind of want more darkness and kind of, I guess, realism. I'm not sure about that sentiment, but I, I think a lot of people have a problem with that, uh, especially with that one frame where like the mouth is being held open uh, and he's going, oh. it's obviously gonna be difficult, like with any artist to kind of like make that image, but I, I don't think it's right to do that in comic book form. So that's just my opinion though. I still think it looks fine. I don't really have a problem with it. Uh, I just think that they could have, it could have been more effective um, in terms of creep factor and grossness. <laughs> but of course I like the colour again. The tint is very yellowy, uh, which kind of makes me feel sick because of course you're in a dentist. Uh, it makes you feel sick anyway. The light kind of... Bleh. Yeah, like, you, you get the sense of like, I'm in a dentist, oh no, <laughs> you know. But speaking of lighting, that's actually one point that I really like in this next one, and it is the new kid. I am not surprised that they chose to do the new kid. It's a pretty good story, I think, even for the graphic novels. But this is kind of more of what I was hoping for. It's like darkness, because a lot of the fear is going to come from what's in the dark and stuff like that. 
And this really is a good sense of kind of like the vastness of the pizzerias and the darkness of the pizzerias, of course, uh, the abandoned pizzerias in particular. Um, I think all of this one is good. I actually don't mind the design of Devon. Uh, I really don't mind the design of Golden Freddy. And you can see the pool of blood under his feet. It's so cool. And you can even see, oh my gosh, I just, I just saw this. The legs are even red, like they're covered in blood, which is really cool. This is obviously the scene where, um, wait, what scene is this? Is this the scene where Devon goes back in afterwards? I'm not too sure. I'm, I don't know which scene this is, but I can't read the thingies for you, so I can't tell. And again, everyone has a problem with one thing in this <laughs> in this one, and that is the animatronics in the back. I don't know why people have a problem with this. I think they look really cool. I actually really like the designs. Um, obviously, not completely accurate, and they're very lit up for like the background. You know, you know what I mean. Like a lot of the time, you want background things to be kind of like dark so that the foreground kind of shows up more. And at the moment, I think that the focus is mainly on the background rather than, you know, what's happening in the foreground with the blood, Golden Freddy and Devon. But I don't mind the designs and I think a lot of people have a problem with it. I can kind of see why, but I don't mind them. I, I really think people are being very critical of these, uh, of this artwork. Uh, yeah, I, I think it, I think it looks good. But don't let me form your opinion for you. If you don't like these, that's completely fine. I completely understand that. But I think these look completely fine. What do you guys think? Tell me down below. I'm pretty glad that we actually got Fetch in one of these in one of these graphic novels. I think it was a good story to put in. Uh, it's a classic story, a, a classic, an absolute classic. So yeah, let me know what all of you think about all of this. Uh, are you excited for the graphic novels? I certainly am. I think the first one comes in September, and I think this one comes in May, no, March next year, March, April, sometime like then. I know it's a six month gap. It's a weird spacing, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, but Tales from the Pizzaplex comes first, <laughs> July, I believe, July 19th. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe for more content, and I will see you in another video, but I've been Ozone, I have to go Zone. I will see you later, goodbye.